hey assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports and Biscuit. There's a text right here saying, hey, it's me, Biscuit. Yes, he's back with the editing voice. <laughs> Hopefully he did actually put a text in there. The Road to Glory is back at prime time on the channel. So yes, we are back with the Road to Glory at 7 p.m. UK time, guys. I really hope you guys are looking forward to see this back. The Eintracht career mode, as you know, I have announced it already in the last episode that we are moving on from that one because it just doesn't do that well on the channel. And I kind of knew it would happen. I still hoped it wouldn't happen but it did happen after all so we're gonna keep the road to glory going in that Eintracht video most people are actually saying dude just focus on the road to glory this is what we love and that is the main reason as to why we're gonna stick to this one and just try our absolute best to make this the best series that I've done in years on FIFA and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do sprint to glory type stuff in the upcoming days today I'm gonna take some time to create a video for tomorrow that is gonna be um, some sort of like a sprint to glory type video i'm gonna try and like put a twist on it change it up a little bit and make it more interesting for you guys to watch of course but yeah here it goes now today we will jump into the road to glory and there are a couple of comments that we need to go through but before we do that guys if you are new to the channel please subscribe we're trying to hit 300,000 subscribers if you are already subscribed turn on notifications and of course most importantly tell your friends tell your friends who enjoy career mode that there's a content creator out there who's serious that they might enjoy so let's go right into the comments here is one coming in from kelvin Kip and Geno, and he says, um, train Harrison so he can have a higher rating when he's joining the team, like Sojani can see. So he's talking about Ed Harrison, the man that has been in the youth academy for nearly two years now and has not grown at all, which is, yeah, uh, a big disappointment. Just gonna put it like that. We want Ed Harrison to be a good player. Now, another comment that has caught my eye, which really, really um, bothered me, is this one right here. Not the fact that the comment is a bad one, but the fact that Davis actually dropped to showing great potential. As you guys might know, Davis actually had shows potential to be special on him. And now after his loan, he has showing great potential. It's such a shame, man. It's it's just such a shame. And I think I can now delegate a new contract with him. Let's go. Hey, we completely forgot about this one. Uh, I'm going to offer him whatever he wants. Two-year contract. Davis is now happy, boys. The super talent is happy. He's one of the highest rated players in our team, especially at his age of 18. He's right in there with the likes of Cook. He's actually above Cook now, which is uh, quite interesting to see because Cook isn't growing, man. It it's such a such a shame to see. And there are a couple of people saying that I should train Cook now as well because he's kind of stuck and he's one of our favorite players, of course. With the five star, five star, we want him to be a great player. And he has only grown to a 71 this season, which is a plus two in general. But is that good enough? Is that is that not good enough? We'll see what happens with Cook. We definitely want him to grow. And then the last episode, one of the big Biggest questions was about on goal you guys were talking about on goal in the comments down below and here's one that had a lot of likes on it hashtag on goal upgrade on goal the dynamic potential won't have a big impact on him because he's 26 years old so you should upgrade him manually like so Johnny can see so guys what we're gonna do today is we're gonna upgrade on goal yes we are gonna be upgrading the best player in this career mode in two seasons Ferreira has only done it for one season so far on goal has been doing it for two seasons now where he has had over 50 goal contributions in both of the seasons and he has only grown from like a 61 to a 66 and that is not an that is unacceptable basically so what we're going to do today is we're going to jump into the settings we're going to go over into england we're going to go into league one over to leighton orient go down the list jump onto on goal and select the stats and we're going to improve him we're going to make him a better player and we're going to maybe give him some traits as well but in terms of finishing guys we're going to upgrade him from a 64 to a 67 heading accuracy up by plus three as well so mainly all of the stats that are necessary for a striker i'm gonna upgrade by plus three guys that's what i'm gonna do because i genuinely believe angle deserves all of it he 100 deserves all of it gonna improve short passing by just plus one right here defending we're not gonna improve at all he's dribbling again 
very important curve is important as well for uh, someone like him long passing we're, we're gonna upgrade to 51 ball control up to 64 so anything gets a plus three that is like kind of necessary for his position shot power goes up to 71 jumping to 84 stamina we cannot boost by like plus two but not too much um strength we're gonna upgrade by plus three long shots another one where we go plus three sadly ea is kind of letting us down here because we would have liked to improve him um on speed i'm only going to give him a plus two because i don't want him to improve that much i don't want him to be ridiculous all of a sudden but i i do think what we're doing right now is important i, th I think this is something that we that needed to be done and we all know how good he is and he deserves to be higher rated. He deserves to be the best player in this career mode because he has done all of it. He has done it all. He has been so successful in the past two seasons. And for that reason, Angol now has been upgraded. Now, I wonder what his stat is. He has gone up from a 66 to a 69. And I genuinely believe that is the least we can do. A lot of people were actually suggesting to upgrade him to above 70. But, but I think now that we have agreed upon upgrading him manually, Right at the start of the next season, guys, we can go back into on goal. We can go back into Cook as well and upgrade these players if they are not growing manually or um, automatically. So if that doesn't happen, we're going to go in there and upgrade these guys because we all know these guys show performances on the pitch that deserve upgrades. So I am very happy. That we have upgraded on goal now next up though is leicester city the team that is currently chasing down liverpool in real life in terms of the title manchester city is turning into bottle job fc have been beaten by manchester united in an incredible match and i was just so surprised to see what manchester united could actually do big ups to manchester united genuinely guys they are playing with so many young players and they are showing incredible potential james looks like a beast genuinely he looks like a world beater at the moment rashford is actually turning into the striker that the manchester united fans always wanted him to be he's scoring goals consistently it's nice to see just imagine rashford being upgrade upgraded in ultimate team next year or with like a winter upgrade to like an 84 or 85 that would be sick <laughs> marcus rashford is a great player on fifa and everyone loves to use him as well well, Van Bissaka was outstanding in the match. Van Bissaka is my favorite Manchester United player. I, I, I saw him at Crystal Palace last season and I fell in love with the guy and I just thought to myself, man, if we didn't have Trent, if Trent was a center midfielder, for example, instead of like a right back, I would have loved Van Bissaka at the team because he's so good defensively. But of course, I wouldn't, Trent, I wouldn't cha uh, change Trent for anyone. So um, it was nice to see Manchester United actually succeed because as a Liverpool fan, I want Manchester United to be fighting for titles. I want it to be competitive. I want them to be in the mix fighting for the title instead of Manchester City because City I really don't care about and I'm glad that they lost once again. So Liverpool closer to the title than they have ever been in the Premier League history. So I can't wait until the end of the season to see who actually ends up up top. But now it is the road to glory and we're here with the O's chasing down the glory ourselves in the FA Cup. Can we perform yet another upset Liverpool have kicked us out at the Carabao Cup once again this season. Maybe another Premier League side can kick us out of the FA Cup. Or maybe we can kick them out as we go through with Cook. Exceptional dribbling, but yet I actually put in a good tackle there. Oh, Antonsen. Exceptional steal. Ferreira. Angol. Now plays it through into Ferreira once again. Ferreira has someone in the middle. Unbelievable pass from Ferreira. I did never expect a pass like that from Jesus Ferreira. And we're going to cook it with Cook Boys. A beautiful Ferreira with the cross immediately on his four-star weak foot. And Ed Cook steps up and scores it this is what we want to see from our youngsters man and cook has been a bit quiet lately it's nice to see him score again it is his second goal in the fa cup the o's are about to beat leicester city that would be a story to uh put into the papers today i would love to see that happen but of course we cannot underestimate leicester city they haven't had a chance yet, but when they do have one, they're going to be very dangerous. So we got to be careful here. I wonder who they're playing up top. They're playing Calvert-Lewin. Okay, so Jamie Vardy might have left Leicester City. Boetius is playing down the left. 
another player that shouldn't be here, Cavett Lewin, is heading it right onto Bennett. And that is a big chance that's going to cost him in the end. If we do actually go ahead and score from this counter here, Angol upgraded, Angol again with the strength, Angol, it is Wad, a oh, Ward actually coming in, Wad, what the hell, what is that, VAR his brother, Collins, ooh, Collins, 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 that might just be a red card guys, I might have, okay, we get lucky, Collins only picks up a yellow card in that position, it should have been a clear red in my opinion, it's a tactical fall and on top of it, it's a bit of a, um, a violent one as well from Collins. And... Can we just talk about what just happened? I want to go into the replay. And I want to show you guys what I was aiming for. Why is that thing not here? What, where, is, where is my... Ah, uh, isn't showing. Why is it not showing what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to throw this one to Ferreira. Do you guys see Ferreira right there? Completely by himself? No? Of course you see him. What's my what's my goalkeeper doing? What's EA doing? Well, they're throwing it right to the guy that should have never gotten to the ball. Great. Thanks, EA, for taking away my win, potentially. It is 1-1. Leicester City come back. I can't believe this just happened. Zinchenko scores for them. Oh, that's a good cross, isn't it? Wagner, please deal with it. Yes. Well done, Wagner. Cook now. On the ball. Brings it over. Cook. On goal and Ferreira. I see that Ferreira run. I see that run from Angol now. Angol, can he finish it from Artier? <sighs> he tries, he tries. Right before half time, would have been quite nice to finish that one into the top bins, but um, the angle and the uh, body shape of Angol right there wasn't perfect. Is that a good cross? That is a good cross, isn't it? That is a good cross. <sighs> Once again, we start conceding from crosses. Jean Paul Buitius is scoring. He is the one that is the Bundesliga SBC player now coming down that left wing and scoring for my Mainz 05 player. Now with the header, Collins and Wagner nowhere to be seen. Wagner really, really struggles with headers. It reminds me of when, um, when I had Robertson in one of my first Liverpool career modes where Robbo would just concede headers all the time. It really is such a shame to see Wagner be so bad at positioning himself against headers. 2-1, Leicester, the Premier League team, is showing what they got. And Antonsen is injured, so we might have to take him off right now. And bring on Silva de Moraes and go a bit more attacking. So, how about we go 4-1-2-1-2 wide? I think that might be a formation that could suit us right now. As we try and chase down this win. That's, uh, again, Wagner at the far side will be targeted, won't he? They're looking for it, for sure. They know now about our weakness in the team. It's going to be them coming forward again. Antonsen, no, Anderson actually gets to it. But bring it back into Davis. Davis now looking for Lewis. The first time he's actually touching the ball, I think, after like 60 minutes. Good steal by Davis. Is he going to be able to keep a hold of it? Yes, he can. Here goes now Davis, up against Choudhury, or Chowdhury, however you pronounce his name. Davis, keeping a hold of the ball, beautiful. Davis, back again on the ball. Davis, now going through. Davis, cuts back in, still looks for the pass. Silva, man, they're all over me. Silva, left foot on him. Silva, oh my god, he actually scores. Silva de Moraes, after an incredible run of Davis. We're back into the game. 2-2, get in boys, get in, take a look at that finish. Silva, that is exceptional. I can't even do that with Kenny Dalglish and Ultimate Team. How does this guy actually pull it off? Is he that special one? Does he have the finesse shot trait by any chance? Because if he has, that goal makes sense. Silva de Moraes with one of his most important goals and he doesn't even have the finesse shot. 65 curve wow 39 finishing i have no idea how he pulled that one off and now we're gonna go for the win boys now we're gonna go for the win as davis pushes on davis once again on the dribble he has multiple people chasing down davis does well enough to get it into silva de Moraes again silva gets fouled free kick i want that free kick thank you give me that free kick no i'm not getting the free kick what the hell is going on give me that free kick now yes we got the free kick or is it a pen is that a pen no it is a free kick Cook, you have the power free kick trait. Show me what you got, Cook. Power free kick trait. That's all I want to see now. 
Cook hits it onto the crossbar. Not bad at all. Good free kick from Cook. Very unfortunate to not score from that one. I still... I can't remember the last time I scored a free kick goal. Davis. Davis. Ooh, Davis is taking them apart. Davis, mate, you are sick. A few more changes need to come into the game right now. My wingers are really tired, so Florentine and Dennis now coming into the game. Hopefully we can counter-attack uh, Leicester City right here to pick up another win, man. It would be massive to move into round six of the FA Cup. Herrera brings it back into Davis, the man that controls the midfield. He is the one. Davis now getting it into Silva again. Silva pushing on. Silva on his right foot. Silva is trying to become the hero of this match. And he nearly did it. Down the right, there's too much space. There's too much space down the right, boys. We can't leave him that much space. Leicester City now on the attack. Anderson and Lampru defending together. He just about did it there. Davis cuts back in, plays it into Ferreira. Ferreira into Silva. Silva, Silva, Silva. Come on, come on, Silva. You can do it. Man, you can score from outside the box, but the 39 finishing shows inside the box. That is awful. Oh, we're covering these passing lanes. They somehow still find a way through, and Bennett saves it. 93rd minute in the FA Cup, and it is a huge save from Bennett that will probably push us into the replay of this round. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I have done well enough with the O's right here in this matchup against the likes of Leicester. I am proud of what my team has achieved. And now we are going into the replay, boys. Not bad at all. Or is it going into extra time? I think it's a replay, right? Oh, it actually goes into extra time. Wow, okay, there will be a winner today. Hopefully it's gonna be us. Dennis, Dennis running through. Dennis running through. Then he's still going through. Then he plays it, but he's just not capable of putting that one in behind. Anderson, another cross. Another time where Leicester are trying their luck with these crosses. And the first half of extra time is finished. Leicester still looking for that third as we desperately defend and try to hit them on the counter. But so far, we haven't been able to do so. Both of our strikers down on stamina, so they're not able to get in behind as well. Even Ferreira struggling at this stage of the game. So, um, yeah, you can't really expect too much. I think it might have to go down into penalties where we step up with Bennett and try our best as we did last season. It's going to be Leicester again. Once again, Leicester push on. I cannot stop them. <sighs> Luckily, that was a bad heading position for Jose Perez, who comes into the game now to try and get Leicester that goal. We have been pushed into our defense and we have not been able to create any chances. Silva de Moraes, Silva, Silva. The Brazilian comes out of him. It's going to be a great ball inside. Yuri Tielemans, always capable of playing an exceptional ball. And Ricardo scores in the 121st minute. We're going to skip everything as fast as possible. But that might have just been it, guys. We might have just lost against Leicester. Not, we not, didn't, like, we did, we did, we did lose. <sighs> That's it. That's it, man. The Premier League quality once again shows. Oh. I thought we had it. I thought we had them for the penalties. But Ricardo Pereira. He does it. Look at that finish on his left foot. That is an unbelievable finish. What a strike. No chance for Bennett. No chance for our defenders. We get kicked out of the FA Cup, boys. We tried our best. Silva de Moraes especially. And Davis have had an exceptional game today but sadly it wasn't enough unlucky man that is sad and Tonsen has gotten injured in this match so we'll have to figure out what it is with him is he gone for a long time maybe if it is a long-term injury we might have to bring in Silva de Moraes um, there are a couple of people who want to go um, I think Turley is gonna leave anyways and Davis is happy with the amount of football he's getting now. Let's go, boys. That is nice to see. And then um, De and Silva de Moraes wants some more playtime, which I completely understand, my man. I do understand, Silva. You will be playing more for sure. Widowson gets an offer. How long is the injury? Five days injury on Antonsen. One of our most important players for sure. So uh, it's good to be able to keep him in the squad and healthy as well. 
gonna set a few things up here 4k in the wage budget just in case we need to increase another um, a man with his wages but here it is we are currently in that first position one point ahead of Wigan and most especially four points ahead of Luton Town now against Blackpool we're gonna step up and try and get a good result with the um, 4 one 2 one 2 wide yes we are actually gonna be playing Silva de Moraes now in this game He's going to jump in into that camp position. McPherson comes in for Davis. Antonsen will be dropping down to the bench. And the likes of, let's say, Sweeney will now come onto the bench. Actually, no. I'm going to play this game with my reserves team, guys. This, this team does need to play in. And we need to make some other players happy. We might pick up a bad result here, which I'm kind of expecting. But they haven't had the best run of games as well. So maybe... There's a slight chance of us picking up a victory here, but I want to go through one of the longest comments I have ever gone through in this career mode, and it's perfect that Lewis scores because here's the comment. I was so bored that I decided to write a storyline for Lewis. I think it would be nice to have backstories to each youth player. Jordan Lewis was born in 2002 in Nottingham, his father being from Leighton Orient and at the time playing for Notts County and to a Korean mother. Lewis's parents split up in 2005 and his father's career was coming to an end. He stayed with his father as his mother would move abroad. Uh, abroad. Uh, his father, who was, a center back, who was a center back, got Lewis into football at a young age and it became clear he was talented. Having had spells at many local junior football teams, he would join the Arsenal Youth Academy in 2000. 2013. He failed to make the grade and he left in 2018. After a year at Nottingham Forest Youth Academy, he left again and this is when he joined Leighton Orient. Lewis isn't the most skillful of players and was actually a left back for the most of his time and to his previous clubs. He has said in interviews that he feels more comfortable on the wing, um, though as he fe feels he has a lack of defensive prowess to be a left back. Lewis, like his father, is a fan of Leighton Orient and he's determined to get the club to the Premier League. I love that story and it's perfect timing. Racer Jake, once again, one of the best commenters out here, coming in with a really nice comment. I appreciate it, my bro. And uh, Lewis has scored in this game, so perfect timing to read out that comment. Thank you so much for that great backstory. So Lewis has had a few options uh, where he joined Arsenal and all those guys but never really made it and now he's joined us and it's looking good boys and Cook wants to play more often. Cook, don't you worry man, stop asking for that much play time, you'll be fine. You're playing most of the time anyways. So, um, should be fine my bro. Now this is the formation that we're currently going to be using as long as Antonsen is injured. Hopefully he will be back soon enough. We are on 81 points now and Wigan are not giving up the same goals for the likes of Portsmouth and Luton. They are still in there to try and kick us out of that position. Of course, this season goes for 42 games, so eight more games left in the season. And I think the last scat report, yes, the last scat report of the man that is only out for six months, 275 on that one, 25k on that one, 275 again, 120k, 110k, nothing too special this guy has a worth of 375k might be worth picking up 110 on that one sadly nothing exceptional in all these players uh, maybe i should pick up the one that goes for 375 but he doesn't really look like he's someone that has a lot of potential so for that reason do i sign him or not philip mcmahon nah i'm not gonna sign him i'm not gonna sign him this one looks a bit interesting because he might be a centre-back and he's only 15. So for that reason, we're going to sign Callaghan right there. But And I think this one was decent as well. There was another one for 275. Where is he now? This one, yeah. Uh, he's like a central player, but awful potential. So we're going to let go of all these players. And with that, the scout has returned. And it looks like Antonsen is back from his injury. So we can go back to the original formation that we were using, guys. We're going to go back to the 442, which um, brought us a lot of success so far throughout the seasons. And for that reason, uh, we're going to be back into it immediately as Davis and also Antonsen return into the starting lineup. Silva de Moraes, of course, will be back onto the bench because he is clearly an exceptional talent. Once again, he has proven that we should have more of an eye on him 
to see what he can become in the future. Next, we have a match against Coventry, though. It is a match against a team that is at the lower league table, a uh, lower half of the league table. And uh, for that reason, we're going to sim this one and hope to see our striker score Angol and Ferreira, both of them on the pitch. Angol, of course, now with the improved statistics, we are expecting him to pick up a few more goals, but Ferreira doesn't care. Ferreira just keeps on going, man. He will never stop. Ferreira is on fire. It is actually ridiculous how many goals that man scores in simulations as well he always steps up and goal even gets subbed off Florentin now coming in and Tonsen scoring to make sure we pick up the three points as they come back and score in the 84th and Tonsen his goal back from his injury actually gets us them points today very nice to see as we remain in that actually we should have remained in the first position but Wigan played two games back to back and Angol is immediately coming in and saying that he wants to be selected more. Angol, you're playing all the time. Yo, EA, I'm playing these dudes all the time. Just because I take them away for one game, you don't need to come in with the messages already. I really don't get what EA is doing. How did they code this game? If you take a guy out of the game for one game, it's done. Or what, What's going on here? Now, we do need to win this game against Flatwood Town. I really, really need that because, of course... Um, it is a two-point gap now to the first position and only a two-point gap to the team below us. Angol now scoring though. Anderson gets injured. We don't have any more centre-backs that are actually good. And after Anderson is injury, we go down, but Wagner comes in, hopefully, with a free kick from 40 yards out, banging it top bins, but they do come back once again. This team is not giving up. They missed the penalty, and Wagner comes up with another one right after Lampru. Both of our fullbacks scoring. Impressive stuff right there. 4-2 victory, and for the first time, I think, Wagner has scored two goals in one game. Madness. Our right back is insane. How long is um, Anderson injured for? 12 days. That is unlucky because he has been really solid next to Collins. That is, uh, yeah, that's just going to be a tough one to replace. Oh, Hape is back from his injury as well. Good. Okay, so that is good. I thought Hape was still injured for quite some time, but he is back from his injury. And that is going to be um, very good for our team, of course, because we do need him back. And Wigan just keep on winning. Wigan is not giving up on that first position, guys. We are currently in that second spot, and I want that first spot. But for today's episode, I thought we need to do one thing which we haven't done in a long time i want to do a proper squad report back in the day when i did my um, career modes every like every month i would actually go into the squad report and show you guys what's happening so i want to do that again today i want to go a little bit more detailed in today's episode in terms of like you guys understanding the players you guys like knowing what's going on with these players how they are doing bennett in 54 games has picked up 15 clean sheets in 36 games in the league he has picked up 11 clean sheets so he hopefully should be up there with the best of the players in terms of assists jesus ferreira is number one 29 assists on him on goal with 22 but wagner with 14 that is really good. He has 10 assists in the league. Wagner is exceptional at the moment. This season, he is showing exactly what he's about. An amazing right back at the moment. Usually should be a left back, but he does so well in that right back position that we never considered him to be a left back for us. And I'm quite glad that we have him down that right hand side. Antonsen, very surprising but very good player. We have signed him on pre-contract, as you guys know, and he has nine goals and 12 assists this season. Lewis has made his move into the starting lineup, pushed off Dennis, the man down here, um, from the starting lineup, taken over from him. Dennis, of course, 28 years old. Lewis is 10 years younger, and now he has 10 goals and eight assists. Lampru actually quite impressive as well. Um, we have signed him on a free, if you guys remember, and um, I was really, really amazed to see how high he was rated. But this man has grown past what we expected. He's now 67 rated, hopefully. Another player for the Premier League. Hopefully he can continue on growing. And then this is the one where we're like, come on, man, just give him some more growth. It's Cook with four assists this season and 11 goals. But in terms of goals, if we go through this, you can see Ferreira, of course, is just destroying it right now. In 36 league games, he has 31 goals and 22 assists. 
Oh my god, Ferreira actually has 53 goal contributions in 36 league games. That is nuts. <laughs> that is insane. Um, on goal, 25 goals and 19 assists. Basically, he has, um, what is it? Uh, 44 yeah 44 goal contributions in 34 games again it's just incredible but it really just comes down to them assisting each other the whole time they're just so good as a partnership i want to see that partnership in the premier league by the time we might get into the premier league Angol will probably be 28 years old so he has two more seasons to grow and uh, try and catch up to Jesus Ferreira, uh, another player that we definitely need to improve manually if he doesn't do it uh, automatically will be Cook. Um, that is such a shame to see him grow so little. And the same goes for Lewis. Both of these talents, 18 and 19 years old, only plus two after like 40 games in a season. I need to see more growth. I really, really do. And it's upsetting to see them not really grow that much. But in terms of attributes, the, the people that have grown the most this season so far are Wagner with plus seven, Davis with a plus seven, Ferreira with a plus six, Bennett plus five, Young with a plus five as well. Uh, Angol has grown by plus five this season after his initial plus two. Um, Lampru plus four, Sweeney has grown quite a lot after coming back from his loan spell. Um, Collins, of course, has been massive and that's at that center back position, incredible physical stats on that man right there. And then we have a couple of players that we will never really use. And then we have Hapa back with his uh, growth as well after a bit of a long-term injury. Uh, Ling is continuing to grow. Cook plus two, Lewis, Cook, uh, Lewis plus two as well. McPherson, after complaining that much about his, about his playtime, is still growing quite nicely. And then we have Silva de Moraes also growing by plus two. So most of the talents are growing at the moment. Some of the players are stagnating and some of them are going down in stats, which is completely understandable, as you guys can see. But um, that is something that I wanted to show to you guys in today's episode because I felt like it was necessary. I genuinely felt like you guys needed to reconnect with the players properly to kind of understand where everyone is standing this season and if i had to pick my favorite player this season it would have to be ferreira but overall my favorite player of the series is angol because he just he just does it for two seasons now and he totally deserved that upgrade that he got today so um if anything happens in the future where you guys feel like players are not growing enough just let me know in the comments down below and we can go ahead and improve them manually as we have done today but enough with the talking i really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, more calm more chilled episode with an exceptional game against leicester city we sadly dropped out of the fa cup no more cup competitions for us it's all about getting promoted at this stage and we are so close to doing it so hopefully we can pull it off towards the end of the season thank you guys so much for watching this see you guys tomorrow on another episode take care love you and peace